And good morning once again from the ABC Space Headquarters in New York. This is Frank Reynolds with Frank Borman and uh, Jules Bergman. The uh, astronauts are making their way back now to the lunar module after going almost but not quite to the very edge of the rim of uh, Cone Crater, which was, uh, of course, one of their goals on this mission. But they've, had, uh, they've offered us some fascinating descriptions of what they saw up there. Uh, to further examine the uh, uh, lunar landscape and to talk about it a bit more, we want to go back now to uh, Houston to uh, Dr. Jack McCauley, who is uh, with the U.S. Geologic Survey, and also with our correspondent, David Snell. I believe they're in our Houston... It would appear that we have the rocks here already before us. Actually, these are samples of the Apollo 12 rocks, but they are something like the kinds of things they've been picking up there. Jack, tell us about it. <laughs> Right, from the uh, voice descriptions, they've been talking about uh, rocks of different sizes and shapes. Uh, uh, yesterday they were talking about uh, hand specimens. Uh, what they were referring to is a rock of about this size, uh, just conveniently fits in your hand. Uh, the types of things that are, they'll actually be collecting will probably range from uh, this type of thing right down to rather small fragments like this. What kinds of things, though, were they getting up on the, uh, as close as they got to Cone, to the edge of Cone Crater? Well, actually, that, that whole area, as we could see from the model, was strewn with rather large boulders. They described one that was up to 45 feet in length. But um, the thing we didn't see in the model uh, are all the small boulders that were below the resolution limit of the photographs that that model was made from. So the whole surface was probably strewn with uh, things of this uh, sort right here. Now, all of these rocks are gray. What, what are the white rocks they're talking about? Well, this is one of the more uh, fascinating uh, returns that we've gotten. The um, uh, lunar uplands in general tend to have a higher reflectivity. They tend to be white. One of the objectives of this mission was to try to get material that uh, came from these uh, primitive highlands. Uh, from the description, it uh, seems that we may have made it. I can see some <coughs> excitement on your part. Th this, is the, this is the reason for this area, for Frau Morrow. That's right. That was the whole objective in, in simple, short terms of going there. All right. How <coughs> disturbed are you, Jack, as a, a geologist, that they didn't actually make it to the rim, which was the final objective, that they couldn't go that last uh, distance? Well, we were aware beforehand that they might have a problem in getting up there. It's a trafficability problem, and uh, it's, it's no real uh, loss. It would have been a bonus if we could have gotten up there. One of the nice things that they could have done was to take pictures inside the crater, such that we uh, might have been able to detect some layering. And one of the things we might have learned from that layering is how thick the Fram Oro is in this area. But um, uh, just their getting up onto the rim of this crater and quarrying material from the local subsurface was more than enough, and they did the job in a, in a highly professional way. I must say I'm gratified listening. And the white rocks <clears throat> that they talked about, first of all, are they really white? Is, that, is it like a, a bed sheet? <clears throat> well, they're probably uh, a light gray. What we're uh, encountering on the moon is, um, is really a lack of color, and uh, the differences that we see are really just shades of gray, so to speak, from very, very light gray on to, uh, to dark gray. So, Okay, thank you very much, Dr. McCauley and uh, Dave okay. Snell. We don't want to miss any of this. Uh, let's go back now to, uh, to our map. Uh, it might be a good idea to show you the actual live picture that we're getting from the moon, which is the one that we've had up for uh, so long before. It does, but it does not cover the area in which the astronauts are uh, presently deployed, and they've been out of sight for some time. We have that picture, of course, but what we've been attempting to do here with our relief map, uh, and Jules over there on the other side of the room here, is to show you uh, the area where the astronauts are actually working. Let's go back now. To, I think it gives you a better idea of where the astronauts are. Let's listen to them. Frank, if we, uh, to recap briefly, uh, in between air to ground of Shepard and Mitchell working their way back, this is our lunar, lunar visual relief map. They stopped about here, just short of reaching Cone's crater, Cone crater rim. Uh, it is the loss of one of the major scientific goals of the flight. They have passed Flank Crater here on their way back. They're way behind their timeline, about 40 minutes behind it. They have bypassed the scientific sampling and pictures at flank. They will likely bypass a trench digging experiment as well. 
and are now about a minute or two from Weird Crater in this area, which is about a halfway back, halfway back towards the Antares lunar module. Let's get back to the other ground now. That's about three minutes away now from Weird. All right, there. Shepard uh, reporting they're about three minutes away from Weird. Crater, we're going by now. We're just to the north of it, Fredo. Is it all the dirt crater? Uh -huh. You want to run over behind that boulder over there? I'll try to talk to you. The other one has to get behind it. Try to talk to you. Oh, that's right. I'll pull with that. Go ahead. Okay. Maybe it's not big enough. I don't think it is. Now, this no, is going to be. Not. There's a big old boulder. I'll take a picture of it anyway. This is to give you an idea of the, how steep the terrain is and what the, some of those craters look like. This is a cut, cutaway view geologists have made up, beginning with a lunar module over here. You have to forgive the poor quality of this drawing. The lunar module over here and Triplet Crater going past Weird Plank up this steep incline of 400 feet to Cone Crater here. And there's the 250 to 350 feet depth to the bottom of Cone. They never quite got to the rim up here they bypassed Flank on the way back. They're now coming alongside Weird, which from all estimates appears to be 80 to 100 feet in depth. That's the dramatic view Shepard and Mitchell are describing now and getting pictures out. So that's the terrain they're in. They're halfway back to the lunar module here. Let's get the air to ground as they describe a Weird Crater. Uh, that's it, Al. Uh, we'd like to proceed on to uh, the 
north uh, triplet. And uh, I'll give you uh, the uh, uh, task when we get there. Okay, we'll try to get the north triplet. You ran out from under me just uh, picking it up. Uh, die. North Triplet is this crater in here, the northernmost of the three craters that make up the triplet body. And they're now, having passed weird, about at this position, working their way along this rim headed toward North Triplet. seven hours away from the actual moment of liftoff from the moon, although we're not uh, terribly concerned about that at the moment. Okay, uh, Alan, Ed, uh, pick up. Triplet, the crater they're working with now, is a very sizable crater. It's some 420 to 440 feet in diameter. And they're going to first dig, punch their core tube in using hammers to get core samples, get photographs, and hopefully retrieve a football-sized rock from here. Faster on this traverse back. Astronauts are now moving back to uh, Triplet, the crater you see there. The northern uh, edge of it is uh, where they're expected to pass by. We'll have more on Apollo 14 right after this message. Yeah, I think that's the best way to go. Let's make uh, 